Hello, and what is going on today, guys? Tomcat here, and welcome back to Project Cars 2, and we've made a little bit of progress in terms of controller drifting. Now, I've got the Rocket Bunny GT86, uh, the street car. We're going to take it out on Mojave uh, Crest, Mojave Gila, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Mojave Gila Crest, and we're going to we're gonna do a little bit, of, uh, little bit of drifting with it, and I'm still working out my settings, but I've gotten a lot further in terms of recording it, uh, or in terms of figuring out what the game likes, um, especially, especially the, like, in terms of counter steering, I've finally figured out what it likes, and part of it's in the setup, part of it is in what this game likes versus what, say, for example, Forza likes. This game likes you to, re prefers for you to return the, st like, if you return the stick for the steering to center, that's where it wants it to be. Like, and, and that's where it has to stay if you want to make, you know, any kind of counter steer, you just leave it in the center. If you try to counter steer the opposite direction, it will punish you so hard that, yeah, you'll be, you'll be wondering why it punished you that hard, and you'll be like, what? That, that's where I was, basically. But so you can see here now, it, you can get it to slide pretty progressively, and only problem is, if you do it too much, you will go off the track, or you will whip the other direction, which is not a brilliant start to this, but, but, as you'll see in just a second, we can, we can show that the, basically the easiest way to learn how to do this is to just, you want to turn into the corner, get, get into the power, and then just let the car just kind of go. It's, and it sounds weird, but you just let the car go and counter steer into the turn a little bit, but you have to let go of the wheel pretty much and let the steering just go and unwind itself. Unlike say, for example, Forza, because if you're used to drifting in Forza, you're going to have such a hard time here, and it's going to be so weird to you that you're going to be like, I have no clue what's going on. Oh, God. Way too much speed. Way too much speed. See, that's the problem is I kind of, I, I took a break from the game for a minute and then got back into it and was like, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. No warm-up necessary. I, I played it earlier. Eh, that's not exactly true. You need some warm-up. Nice thing about this track, too, is that you have this long banking that you can use to kind of cool your engine down. That was a lot of angle, but I messed up and went down to first gear, so it, it was kind of uh, it was kind of a double-edged sword on that one. But as you can see, you literally just get on and off the power, tiny inputs of counter-steer, tiny, like really not much at all, otherwise it'll screw you over. A lot of e-brake. Come on. It likes likes for you to also do little bits of lift off. Ah, we went off on that one. See, that corner is very tricky. That corner is very tricky because you have to... And I'm getting... I'm still getting used to this... Um, this, I guess, style of gameplay or style of drifting gameplay because it's very different from my main game, which is Forza, and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna lie about that. That's just my main game, that's where I've learned how to drift, but you do have to get used to a new system here, that's for sure. There we go. Oh, oh. Not bad. Now, see, if you do it too much, though, you get an immediate snap. You get a, such a hard snap to the side that, like, you would be, you'd be hard-pressed to find any other, you know, any other game that will snap that hard. But, like, I mean, and I'm not sure how realistic that hard of a snap is, but at the end of the day, I mean, you'll still get, you'll, you'll still get this massive snap if you don't do it right, so... See if I can start from back here. Oh, way too far. Yeah, way too far out. I'm actually going to try going back up here and doing that again because I nailed that in my last play session. Yes, I know I'm going the wrong way. I know. I know. Thank you for telling me. Not bad. Still didn't carry any speed, though. 
That was much better. Much better. See, when you get it right, it feels awesome. When you get it right, it feels so good, and you're like, damn, I just did that. This car is also very peaky with the way its boost comes in, so you have to kind of be ready for that. Yep. Ugh. And that's when you mess it up. That's when you get that crazy snap oversteer when you mess up. I mean, and it's like so instant and so immediate that like, I'm not sure how well you can catch that really. Oh, see, the problem was I had been going too far to the outside. And so I was like, okay, I'll go inside. And I went way too far inside. Ooh, recover, please. Thank you. Still sketchy. Oh, there it goes. Damn, all right, we were doing so well, too. We were doing so well, and then I lost my rhythm completely. Like, like crazy lost my rhythm. Build up the boost. Oh, I went back to my, uh, my Forza technique. And see, that's the thing, is you have to... You have to be willing to completely relearn how to do all of this. You have to be willing to completely relearn how the car is going to react, what the car is going to do. And that can be kind of tricky for some people because it's like, you want me to do what? Oh, I tried to transition, but it was like, oh, well, we sort of, I mean, it was so, it was like the snap was so fast that like, man, I want to drift with something V8. So I have torque versus like, see, this only revs to like 7,000, but it's a really peaky turbocharged boxer engine. And the rotary is even peakier because you have to rev it like crazy and you don't get any power at all until like seven. So they're both, they're both very peaky cars. Oh, ah, way too far to the outside still. Man, I was actually, I was nailing that corner before and I nailed it a couple times, you know, before I started this video. And dude, I'll, I really like, I swear I did. Go to the outside, follow it through, there we go. See, that corner and this corner, pretty decent, you know? That corner and the final corner, pretty decent. I want to do it one more time, just so we can try to make it a little cleaner, because there were a lot of, there were a couple corners that I was like, no, that was just, no, just terrible. And the whole reason why the car is shaking so much is because of the way... Well, here, I'll show you exactly why the car is shaking so much. Because of my controller setup. You can see where my steering dead zone is. Right now, it's at 30. Steering sensitivity is at 75. Uh, let's see. I changed it. Speed sensitivity is 80. And then controller dampening is 10. So it's very, very twitchy. But that is kind of... It's kind of how you have to set it up if you want to get the, the response out of a controller that you're sort of looking for, I, I, I guess you could say. There we go. Not bad. Come on. Come on. Oh, nope. Ah, oh, we almost had it, too. We almost had it. And it wasn't much angle. It was a really shallow angle, but... Man, we, that would have looked so crazy if we had made it all the way around that corner. Even mildly sideways. Oh, it got caught in the dirt. I, it was weird because I could feel it, you know, I could feel it getting grip, but man, that got so close and then it was just like, nope. I wonder if going to exterior cam is going to help. I, it, uh, we'll see because in Project Cars 2, like even while Project Cars 1 as well, like drifting in third person was like never something that I was particularly good at so and it, it always feels weird to me because I feel like I can't see what the car is gonna do oh that's not see okay 
It's like, especially in third person, my Forza instincts kick in, and I'm like, and then they don't, my Forza instincts kick in, but they don't necessarily work properly because that's not what I'm used, that's not how I'm used to the game reacting. Let's try third person one more time, see if we can make it work. I just need to pretend I'm in, uh, pretend I'm in first person. Not sure that's a valid strategy, but it might work. <laughs> God dang it, alright, alright. Mm. I'm trying to, see, that's the, the biggest difference between, yes, I, I don't care about my fastest lap right now. The biggest, see, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> the biggest difference between first person and third person, for me anyway, is the fact that in third person, it's so hard to see where I'm placing the front end, and you can't see those little micro movements that you make in first person, uh, in third person view. Crap, 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 dang it! All right, let's try this again. We got another sweeper to try this on. Ah, that was way too much. We see, we were doing well in first person and then we changed the third person and like completely, completely changed. It's like, uh, bro, are you serious right now? <laughs> God, I wonder how close I can get to that wall. I don't know if I want to try to get, like, right up on it, but I can get pretty damn close. Not bad. Not bad. You have to balance... You really have to balance how much steering input you put in, because that can... That can really determine the balance between, you know, a, a solid drift and completely going into the wall uh and i mean your throttle input matters too yes but most of the time it's gonna be it's gonna be your steering because see like that that was all down to like how i returned the steering like i wish you could see how little i was doing on the controller right now i mean i'm really not doing much it was better it was better we didn't go off which is a nice, I mean, it's, I, I know it's not perfect, but it's definitely a start for that corner, because that corner has been, like, the problem corner for a while. Let off, well, I let off a lot back there. Oh, see, if you, if you whip the car too hard, it will, it will legitimately bite you, and that's the physics engine. I mean, it, it just is, it'll, that'll, that'll do it to you no matter what your, uh, no matter what your settings are, and it, it's just, like... It's just a non-forgiving physics engine, man. However... Oh, we backed it in! Damn, we got so close, too. We backed it in, and man, I feel like it could have been so much better, too. I mean, and it was looking like it was gonna be really good. Car sounds good though. Like I'm not gonna lie, it sounds sounds really really nice. And down to second, he braked it in. There we go. That is what I was looking for. That's a hundred percent what I was looking for, and it worked. See up. Uh, if you start that, if you start that crazy, um, back and forth movement, it's like you, the game does not want you to get that back. Very unforgiving in that respect, but we did do a lot better, uh, than previously expected. So, well, at least in the last video. 
Compare this video to the last video, and it's like a big difference. Now, this video to the next video, hopefully it will be a much bigger difference uh, as well, because we're going to be getting more and more and more and more practice. But this car is actually a lot easier to drift uh, than the Rad Bull. So I'm going to go back to the Rad Bull with my new controller settings, see what it'll do, maybe even at this track. So if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comments down below what y'all thought of it. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time. Talk to y'all later.